In the 1950s, Hollywood loved the biblical epic. Samson and Delilah, David and Bathsheba, and The Rogue were each of the highest grossing films of their year. Ben-Hur and The Ten Commandments were the top two films of the entire decade. And yet, despite the popularity of religious spectaculars, there would be only one film made about the life of Jesus during that decade. It was a relatively low-budget independent feature released in 1954, Day of Triumph. The producer was the Reverend James K. Frederick, an Episcopal priest who had pioneered Christian filmmaking in America. His company, Cathedral Films, produced dozens of religious short films for churches and schools in the 40s and 50s. He had made one other feature, The Great Commandment, in 1939, but Day of Triumph would be his most ambitious production. To direct the film, Frederick called upon Irving Pitchell, who had also directed The Great Commandment. It would be Pitchell's last picture. Two weeks after shooting was completed, he died of a heart attack. Cathedral Film staff director Jack Coyle stepped in to supervise post-production. Movies about Jesus date back to the birth of cinema in the 1890s, but no one had attempted a Jesus film since Cecil B. DeMille released The King of Kings in 1927 toward the end of the silent movie era. As the first Jesus film to use both color and sound, Day of Triumph was a landmark of its genre. Listen. A sower went out to sow his seed. The very first shot of Day of Triumph establishes its uniqueness. Whereas most films of the period began with opening titles, the first thing we see in this film is Jesus against a bright blue sky, speaking on camera for the first time in an English language feature film. Listen, he says. And before this commanding figure, larger than life on the big screen, towering above us in a low angle shot, how could we not pay attention? And yielded a hundredfold. Jesus is played by Robert Wilson, a minister's son who had already been featured in Cathedral Films' Living Christ series, 12 half hour films which would be shown by churches and missionaries around the world for decades to come. When Day of Triumph went into production, Wilson was a natural choice for the principal role. Playing Jesus is one of the hardest things an actor can do. The character is by definition some mixture of human and divine. But what does that look like or sound like on the screen? What sets Jesus apart from any other character? Is it his eyes or his voice? Is it what he does or what he says? Is it the way people react to him? Is it the angle of the camera or the music that underscores his presence? Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Spirit. No actor can fully measure up to the burden of expectation and significance which audiences bring to a Jesus film. Will Jesus seem too remote and otherworldly or too ordinary and down to earth? Lazarus, come forth. Wilson bore a striking resemblance to popular images of Jesus. One critic saw both humanity and divinity in what he called an uncanny blend of simplicity and sincerity. Another noted that while Wilson doesn't make the Lord seem pale or namby-pamby, neither does he make him the red-blooded he-man. Later actors would try a more expressive personality for Jesus with flashes of anger, moments of playfulness, or even some self-doubt. But Wilson played Jesus with restraint while avoiding the pious stiffness characteristic of earlier portrayals. The scenes with Jesus stick close to the gospel accounts without fictional embellishments. The story of Judas, however, is largely a work of invention, imagining the betrayer of Jesus as a zealot rebel committed to the overthrow of Roman occupation. It is possible 
Our search for a leader of the downtrodden is ended. James Griffith plays Judas, and Lee J. Cobb, fresh from his celebrated performance in On the Waterfront, plays Zadok, the fictional zealot leader. The humble, the weak, the all but hopeless. Zadok, our, our search is ended. The Nazarene is everything we need for a figurehead. One of the most one memorable the sequences is the conversion of Mary Magdalene, played by Joanne Drew. After hearing Jesus tell the parable of the lost sheep, she asks her servant, Clois, played touchingly by Tony Jerry, about this charismatic teacher. And he knows, if you could look into his eyes, everyone's someone to him, not just a, another face in a crowd. And he has such kindness, such understanding, such sympathy for us all. For everyone? Oh, yes, mistress. For the rich and the poor, for the powerful and the weak, for the good and... and the lame. You almost said the wicked, didn't you? For everyone. For Soon Magdalene finds herself kneeling at Jesus' feet, receiving the but gift of a transformed life. Love's little. Master. Sins are forgiven. Her beautiful close-up is an icon of forgiveness, representing everyone who has ever received the Savior's grace. Day of Triumph opened in Hollywood in December 1954. The Los Angeles Examiner praised its unforgettable emotional impact. Newsweek said, compared with Hollywood biblical extravaganzas, Day of Triumph is a model of simplicity and good taste. Life magazine gave it a splashy four-page spread. Man doesn't sell his life for a handful of silver. But as no. is the case with many Jesus Not films, the treatment of Judaism in the gospel story came under scrutiny. Judas's love of money veered too close to an old stereotype. And some felt that Judas had the look of anti-Semitic caricature compared to the other disciples. Ironically, Griffith's Judas is one of the strongest and most sympathetic performances in the film. Jewish sensitivity toward Jesus' films is rooted in anti-Semitism's long history of misusing portions of the Passion story to incite bigotry. While the makers of Day of Triumph themselves had no such intention, the detractors saw what they saw, and their complaints had a devastating effect on distribution. The controversy made many theater owners reluctant to book the film, despite the enthusiasm of viewers and critics. Day of Triumph would only play in 20% of American cinemas before being pulled from general release. It would live on in television syndication, church screenings, and home video, but Frederick never produced another feature film. More than half a century later, Day of Triumph remains a masterpiece of Christian cinema. It is a product of its time in terms of cinematic look and acting styles, yet its unpretentious sincerity retains the freshness of good storytelling and persuasive performances. And its opening shot remains one of the great moments of the genre, as the Christ image, silent since the very beginning of Christian art, is given a voice for the very and first time. He, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. 